Well, I'm back in uh, Cape Town after visiting my friend Ian Chamberlain who flies uh, in the African bush for Macau. So, to recap just how I got here. This is November 2019 and uh, just after I finished the summer float flying uh, season up in Alaska. This is uh, Lake Hood. Here's the busiest seaplane base in the summertime. Uh, this is actually two lakes, Lake Spinard and Lake Hood. Around the end of September, the weather really starts to change and makes it really unfavorable for doing VFR seaplane flying, which means at this time the float plane season comes to an end. And this is also the time when I typically migrate south to warmer climate. And this year I decided to uh, visit the Southern Hemisphere and I'm down in Southern Africa. So of course, having operated in the Alaska bush, I was very keen to understand and go experience some of the bush flying in Africa. So if you're joining now, here's a quick recap of what I've shown so far. Episode one essentially was an introduction to the Botswana bush flying. In episode two, I covered some of Ian's cargo operation and you guys can see the process at these uh, wildlife uh, viewing camps. And in the second episode, I also covered a little bit about flying down to the central Kalahari game refuge. So we just airborne out of bound. We are on the club to find also. So in this episode, I'd like to cover more about the flying down to the central Kalahari. Fly the African bush a little bit. I go to the African bush, go out to the central Kalahari. So before. after Ian returns from his early morning uh, cargo run, we catch up with him at the Mound Airport. We're going to head south down to the central Kalahari and after that we're going to fly due north again to Kwai River. And Kwai River is situated at the edge of the Chobe National Park. Here we go. So Ian had just returned from his cargo runs, now it's off to Hainai Adventures, Deception Valley and then uh, Kwai River. As you may have heard me mention in the previous episodes, the wildlife fences in Botswana play a big role in conservation efforts. So today I'm going to be flying south with Ian and we'll be seeing some of these fence lines from the air. So let's go check it out. So along the way, I think Ian is going to show me what the uh, buffalo fence or the buffalo cut line really looks like. And we'll get to experience the Kalahari, which is also very, very dry at this time. We'll get to experience that from the air. And then from the center of the Kalahari, we're going to fly almost due north to Kwai River. And Kwai River is uh, located at the edge of the Chobe National Park. The Chobe National Park is one of the best national parks in all of Southern Africa. It's very well known for its variety of wildlife species 
and also lush vegetation. This is because the Chobe River runs through the park and of course during the dry season all this water attracts uh, a lot of bird species and wildlife. And uh, if you're a fan of the world's biggest uh, giant, the elephant, then uh, Chobe National Park in Botswana is the place to go. It's believed that there's between 50 and 100,000 uh, elephants in Chobe. The park covers a uh, little over 12,000 square kilometers. The Chobe National Park offers a variety of uh, activities and accommodations. Uh, you can rent a houseboat, uh, there's Chobe safaris, day trips, camping safaris, lodge safaris with some really, really exclusive lodges and accommodation options. And getting to experience this wildlife and all that this wilderness area has to offer, there's just about something for everyone. There's a few ways in and out of uh, Chobe National Park. The village of Savuti is located inside the park. Uh, Linyanti is a tented and lodge style accommodation just west of Chobe. And then there's Kasani. The village of Kasani offers easy access to and from Chobe and with really cool accommodations all along the river and you can even walk into town from these accommodations. And uh, Kasani is an easy stopover point for visitors to and from uh, Chobe National Park. Gabret, we will make space and we are ready number two, good to have a seven. So we're just airborne out of bound. We are on a climb to five level seven up to Hein Adventures. It's a little uh, airstrip on the central Kalahari border. Uh, reason being for back in the day they weren't allowed to have any airstrips inside of the Kalahari game reserve. So they had a two or three outside and then it will just drive into our flight time there is approximately about 35 minutes. Oh, oh there we go. And uh, from there we'll actually go on to the shortest, uh, the shortest little hop in the whole of the Akavango Delta, like they probably most probably also Botswana. It's uh, two airstrips two miles apart from each other. So it's going to be about a three minute flyby. I got a one zero seven five miles inbound to Hina Adventures for the everything. And then from there on we will uh, climb back up to 9.5 oh, okay, and route to Kwai River, which is then back into the Okavango Delta again. Okay, now we're at Hind Adventures, right now we're in 04. Uh, that's why these ones are based outside, basically on defense. And then you'll land here, camp the night, and then I'll just do day drives into the central country reserve. Green Tower, 1017 file, 0400 Adventures. Caution, terrain. Caution, terrain. 500. No, I got Oh, nice attempt. Here's the fire station, of course, at the airport and making sure things go as safe as it can be. Uh, we had just arrived with the Mac Air uh, Grand Caravan at Haina Camp. 
and uh, the guests are being picked up and from here we're going to hop over to another airport just uh, two miles away. Hey Ian, how's it going? Good, hot. Yeah, where did we just land? We just landed now at Hain Adventures, which is on the border of the Central Kalahari uh, Game Reserve. Yeah. <laughs> Dropped off five, now we're going to do the longest, I'm joking, the shortest little hop in the Okavanga Delta. Literally two miles to that site is Deception Valley. We will be picking up two more. And yeah. tell us about your SOP, how are we going to do this? We're not just taking off and straight into the other air airport because the runways are kind of lined up, but what's the procedure? They are kind of lined up, unfortunately as per SOP we have to take off, join overhead, have a look for any game vehicle, look for game, and then join normal left or right hand pattern and onto the favoring runway. And what is joining overhead altitude? We normally join our altitude is about 3,100 foot, so we normally join about 4,000 foot overhead, so it's about 1,000 foot. And is it 1,000 AGL or is 1,000 above pattern altitude? Uh, about 1,000 AGL. Okay. Above, yeah. All right, let's and go. And then, yeah, also reason for joining over it, so we'll obviously look for direction of the wind. Have a look if there's a game vehicle and have a look at the runway is actually clear. There's a few times where you'll have other long side runway or on the runway you'll have ledgeware, red bike, uh, elephant, giraffe, zebra, so make sure We it's are clear. All, after all flying in Africa, this is where the animals are, This right? is where the animals, in okay, the bush. Yeah. Thanks man, looking forward, let's go. <laughs> all right, let's go, let's close up. What's the name of this large again? Uh, that's Deception Valley. Uh, yeah. Deception Valley yeah. Large. Uh, this is the Central Kalahari uh, Triple Cut Line. So we're actually now into the Kalahari Game Reserve. Those are game fences. Oh. Uh, yeah, just a reminder. So back in the day, apparently there were no, they weren't allowed to have any airstrips in the Central Kalahari. Uh, that's why these ones are based outside, basically on defense. And then you will land here, camp the night, and then I'll just do day drives into the Central Kalahari Reserve. But now tabs have changed, so we actually do have one or two lodges that's in the Central Kalahari inside of the park. But well, why park. were there two so close to each other? Uh, that is still a question I'm trying to figure out. I'm assuming some form of politics. Uh, between but the two largest competing. Yeah. Com for competing probably for the concession to... Uh, so the one large started and the other guys probably caught on and said, oh, we want to do that too. Yeah. Most probably something, probably like, something like, well, you're not going to use our runway. Then we'll just build our own one. Uh, right. Hello guys, welcome to the uh, African bush. Uh, we just landed in the middle of the Kalahari. 
it's kind of dry out there as you can see uh, we're gonna we're gonna be taking off this is the dirt uh, the gravel actually not even gravel this is the dirt runway and in the middle of the African uh, wilderness here this is in the almost in the middle of the uh, Kalahari Desert uh, this is uh, Wildlife Central. We got a lot of cats out here. A lot of the big uh, five is everywhere. Of course, this is the middle of the day, so all the animals are pretty much asleep, and they'll come out to the watering holes uh, come sunset or later in the evening when the when the temperature uh, cools down. It's about 38 Celsius right now, so that puts it at about 100 and hmm, what is it, 105 or something like that. But anyway, no problem for the turbine. Uh, we get excellent performance on the PT6-140, of course that gets us almost uh, 900 horsepower, so on uh, dirt strips like this, no problem. And this is a 3,000 foot runway, so it's really no problem, we're at 3,000 MSL. Uh, so from a performance perspective, this is uh, easy money for the caravan out here in the bush. We shut down in uh, hot temperatures like this, we watch the ITT, so we want to have the ITT below 150 to introduce fuel again on the startup. So typically what lands, uh, what happens on landing as you uh, power down the engine, you just want to run it a little bit and then make sure the ITT drops to the temperature where it's uh, suitable for starting again. So it looks like we'll be loading up and getting going uh, in a bit here, so... So one of the interesting things about operating in um, the wilderness, especially with lots of wildlife around, is the topic of runway contamination. Now, of course, the strips that uh, are located at these safari camps, none of them are fenced uh, for the reason of protecting the wildlife. So from a piloting perspective, it's all really about trying to manage the safety elements around uh, the runway operations, both for the sake of the animals and, of course, the people and equipment that gets transported in and out. These strips are really all considered off-airport locations, so that's pretty exciting for operating the caravan or the turboprops into off-airport locations. So I asked Ian to uh, explain a little bit about their standard procedures for operating in this environment, and here's what he had to say. So generally we'll join five miles inbound uh, to the runway. We'll call five miles inbound, we'll join overhead. Once we overhead the airfield, obviously we look out for things like wind, uh, the condition of the runway, is it contaminated, is it wet? And then very importantly, is there any animals on the runway? Also what we keep a lookout for is if there's a game viewer or a game vehicle present. Uh, the game vehicles should arrive about 10 minutes before landing time. Once they get to the airfield, they'll do a quick runway inspection, driving up and down to see if there's any animals on the runway or actually also in the near bushes around the runway. Once we have joined overhead, we'll join either left down in left hand downwind or right hand downwind. Uh, also keep an eye on the game viewer. Uh, normally it should be stationary. If it starts moving or starts speeding to the one end or the other end of the runway, that's generally a good indication that they have spotted animals and we should be extra cautious or consider doing a go around depending on which part of the flight we are. Sometimes even on final approach, you'll see the vehicle flashing its headlights or also start speeding towards the threshold and that is a 90% chance of there's actual there's animals in the vicinity or on the runway. I'll take a look at the right side. All right, you. We'll look at good. It's a one zero seven airborne deception valley right at. Quite a bit. It goes in a straight line here for about 50 miles. Yeah. From this side, the uh, Kalahari line stretches out to the west for about five miles. Runs east west, miles. Yeah. yeah. 50 miles, but what you can see it on here, but it's a very big part of the actual Botswana, uh, central Botswana Kalahari. So it's a very, very big uh, national park. 
Not sure how big, but you'll see it on the map. It's quite big. Now, do you know, do, are those the same kind of fences or is it different types of fences out there and then the inner one? I'm not too sure. I think there might be a, a middle one, might be a bit taller. Uh, probably no, a bit elephant proof, uh, yeah. giraffe proof, but mostly obviously elephants. And I'm not sure if they, I'm also not sure why it's actually a triple cut line. Uh, oh, the outside ones maybe just to keep out the small antelope, yeah. you know, uh, with a finer mesh. Maybe, and then the middle one, one might be a big game fence, be, uh, tall, uh, tall big game fence. With a strong uh, cable in the middle to keep out the, the bigger... So, really they want to keep animals in the Kalahari, and uh, the Botswana animals, uh, yeah, they want to keep them inside of the Kalahari. I think, Fuck. yeah, I think that try to separate them, but I'm pretty sure... The Not animal... allow, like, cross-contamination. Yeah. So this leg north is just over 100 miles. And as we're coming up to the Mound CTR just to the east, we talk to them to transition. The CTR extends uh, for 20 miles and then the TMA uh, up to 50 miles. And we talk to Mound ATC to request transition through their uh, control zone. This is Marwan International Airport. Information India. Hello, I'm Rosalind Rose, Rose Clear Transit Air at the flight of Nana 5 VFR to report next to AB Mound. How far, Abim? Thank you, we are clear on at 9.5, we will be crossing the beam at uh, 2 zero miles from your Victor Green to Quite a, quite a, quite a popular uh, airfield. As we're approaching into the Kwai River area, you can tell the um, there's a lot more water present. Um, you can look at the vegetation, it's a lot greener. And um, so this is definitely um, a part of the delta. This is on the edge of the delta and uh, very close to the Chobe National Park. What a day it's been so far. Down to the central Kalahari, uh, due south of Maun, uh, and visited the central Kalahari game reserve. And now on this leg, due north, I really got to see um, a quite diverse landscape. Uh, in the Kalahari, it's pretty much desert. And uh, here, w once we approach the delta, you could just see the widespread effect of the uh, Okavango Delta with all the green vegetation and, of course, the water. So this is our final stop for the day before uh, returning to Maun. I'll leave you with a few visuals of uh, Kwai River. Traffic, 2 o'clock, low, 1 mile. Uh, at quite a lot, as you can see of all the vehicles around, it's quite a busy little airstrip or it can get really busy. Sometimes we've actually had aircraft <laughs> orbiting overhead to hold for a little pad being used. Traf for congestion park. in the traffic pattern. Congestion, yes. So nice. uh, uh, it's a very popular, it's, uh, it feeds mobile safaris, it's got a few lodges, it's got a village, it's got, it's, it's got a bit of everything and it's got a lot of game viewing. Oh, so wow. it's a yeah. very popular, it's only half an hour flight from now. So. And it's right on the river, so it's really there's Under a lot river. of water. Even without uh, recent rains, it would pretty pretty much be green almost all year round. Definitely, yeah. yes. It's, uh, it also feeds, feeds from the Okavango River all the way up. Okay. Up. As we're departing Kwai River uh, for Maun, we fly over some of the most beautiful green uh, vegetation and of course you can also see a lot more animals present in this area just because of the water. Thanks for flying along. If you like this kind of uh, content, be sure to like the video, maybe leave a comment if you have any questions. We'll see you on the next episode. Today was a lot of fun. 
I'm really excited about tomorrow. I'm going to see the Victoria Falls for the very, very first time. So come back and join us tomorrow. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little bit of insights into the game fences and also the flying down to the central Kalahari game reserve and then also flying north to Kwai River, which is at the edge of the Chobe National Park. I always look forward to your questions and comments. So if you like what you're seeing, leave a comment below or if you have a question, look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you in the next episode. Traffic, 2 o'clock, low, 1 mile.